This is Psych Boost, helping you with your psychology qualification, one video at a time. This video is on perception, and the sixth GCSE video will be covering factors affecting perception. The very kind support of students and teachers who donate on Patreon help me help you by continuing to make these videos and resources. A very big thank you for all your help, guys. To join them, follow the link. For everyone, you might want to check out the free worksheet for this video and the quiz. So I imagine you're here to study GCSE psychology. So here are the terms on the AQA GCSE specification we're going to cover in this video. As we go through the video, they'll all be in red text. You need to be able to respond to questions on all of this. So let's start by explaining the term perceptual set. Our brains are thought to be biased in the way they perceive information. As sensory information is detected, we focus on some bits of information and ignore other parts. We have a group or a set of expectations based on previous experience that we use to make inferences, altering our perception. So what factors can influence our perceptual set? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk about four. Culture, motivation, emotion, and expectation. Culture influences the development of people through socialization. We learn norms and values, and we tend to share the same mental schemas as other people in our society. This means people with different cultures will perceive the world differently. Hudson showed this with images like this one. When presented with an image similar to this, black South Africans were more likely to say the man was hunting the elephant. White Westerners said the antelope. Both cultures perceive the same image differently. Now it's likely that white Westerners had more experience with drawn images and perceived the man as closer to the antelope as they were on the same ground and assumed the elephant, while close on the drawing, was large and far away on a hill. Motivation is thought to influence our perceptual set. If we want an object, it will be highlighted in some way in our perception. Our motivation might be to satisfy basic needs like hunger or thirst, or because the object gives us status. Our emotional state is thought to influence how we perceive the world and objects in it. So, for example, you might perceive someone else's body language as aggressive if you're already in a bad mood, or a movie as particularly sad if you're depressed. Also, our expectation of what we're about to perceive will influence what we do actually perceive. So, our perception is based on previous experience. So we'll tend to focus on what matches our expectations and then filter out what we're not expecting. Let's focus on a couple of studies. Gilchrist and Nesberg investigated if motivation for food influenced perceptual set. Firstly, they assigned participants to either be deprived of food for 20 hours or not at all. Both groups were told they would be matching images and showed images of food for 15 seconds. After the image was shown, it was turned off then showed again with the image's brightness reduced. The participants were then asked to readjust the image so it had the same brightness as the original image. Gilchrist and Nesberg found that the food-deprived participants adjusted the image to be brighter than the participants who had not been food-deprived. So they concluded from that that motivation, such as the motivation to eat, does change a person's perceptual set, making food appear brighter to hungry people. So if we evaluate Gilchrist and Nesberg's study, we can think of practical applications to this research. Food marketers may want to focus on how they use imagery in promoting their products, knowing it will attract hungry customers. We can criticize the study though. As the experimental group of participants were asked not to eat for 20 hours, this might have set up a demand characteristic, with participants feeling they were expected to respond to pictures of food in an exaggerated way maybe hoping in some way to help the researcher. The study was also an independent group's design. There could have been individual differences between the groups in their perception of brightness. Our next study to consider is Brunner and Minton's study of perceptual set. They investigated if the expectation of a particular stimulus would alter the perception of that stimulus. So let me explain. The participants were told they were taking part in a study on recognizing numbers and letters. The researchers then flashed a series of numbers or letters onto a screen and the participants had to write down what they had seen. 
there was a test stimulus, a broken B. So the broken B can be interpreted either as a B or as a 13. Now, what the researchers found was when they primed the participants with a series of numbers, the participants were more likely to write down 13. When flashed with a series of letters, the participants were more likely to write down a B. So the conclusion made from these results was the participants' expectations influenced their perceptual set, changing how they interpreted the broken B. So when evaluating Brunner and Minton's study, we could positively evaluate the methodology. It was a lab study, so potential extraneous variables were highly controlled, given a high internal validity. And as standardised procedures were used, the study is easy to replicate. However, the study used students as volunteers. This is a problem, as it might be that perception changes as people age. Or people who volunteer might have differences in perception, potentially making the findings on perceptual set ungeneralizable. The task itself also lacks mundane realism. The task is unusual, and not how perception is experienced in everyday life. In everyday life, there are a few truly ambiguous situations. So, now we've covered the content, you need to be able to use all that information to actually answer questions. Here are five questions I've made to test your skills. So, pause the video and give them a go. For those of you who support me on Patreon, I've put together a quick bonus video showing you how to answer these questions properly. For everybody else, thank you for watching, subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next video on development, early brain development.